So we are out here at Project Blow Your Mind for the update on structural steel. Now it is Project Blow Your Mind and we're gonna blow your mind right now when you see the details behind all of this exposed structural steel. You and I, we never show emotions, we just keep it down, down inside. Yeah, you and I, both longing for expression for the things we like, but we stay quiet. Okay, so standing behind me, this great room has some incredible detail. You can see some of it right now on the rough framing stage, but this is 80 feet long, 30 feet tall, and you can see this black steel around me that's gonna be exposed and finished for the client at the end. And again, this entire great room is surrounded with glass. We have aluminum clad, thermally broken windows here, all the way around. Arcadia is the brand here, and this entire roof sits on that glass. And so structurally, there's a lot of components that go into that. And fortunately, our project manager on this project is Spencer Neild, who comes with us. He had roughly 10 years of experience working in heavy structural steel all around the country. And so the benefit of having him is now this project, he really understands uh, the red lines, the shop drawings, everything that goes into structural steel to pull off this detail from the design inspiration from Jamie Rose, who's our interior designer, and then of course, Sean Roberts with Pinnacle Conceptions. As they come up with the design, now we have to bring this to execution. So we're gonna take you over here, introduce you to Spencer. Spencer, how you doing, buddy? Good. So Spencer's our project manager, but what's really important, go ahead, you can sit down, Spencer. Is we're gonna take you behind the scenes of what this looks like. You know, from our 2D drawing, here we have our 2D drawing of the plans, and this is the, what, what you see on video. You have right here a view of the fireplace. There are some structural components here on the fireplace. And then of course, these are exposed trusses. We have eight of them here through the great room. And this shows, you know, the turnbuckle as well as um, all the wood framing with our wood framers that they had to put these up and then all the little details. However, even though this looks great on paper from our structural engineer, the reality is there's a lot of RFIs and red lines that have to take place. And you can see just from this conception to what Spencer had to work on here. And you can see the amount of detail here of all the little changes and things that Spencer went through to say, okay, we understand the concept and the design intent, but what brings that to reality? What brings that to install? And now as we showcase, as Spencer was working um, with our company that did the shop drawings and they do a full 3D, we're gonna show you right now as we dive into what that 3D is and how we use that in our construction process and how valuable that information is to make sure that what we're building will stand the test of time, it'll be durable, and of course, meet the original design concept. So walk us through this detail, Spencer. So we're over here looking, we have the 2D that we talked about on video, and now from our, our shop drawings, from our steel. Yeah, so the structural steel detailers, they take the contract drawings and they build a 3D model of all of the steel. So this is drawn to exactly how the steel will be fabricated. So what this does is it lets me be able to review the model and make sure that we have all the components that are on the contract drawings, but also just look for areas where we may need to add something. I can take dimensions in here. Color-wise, why do we have a difference of colors between each of the Just the different steel members. Um, you know, this is tube here, uh, but it's also assembly, so we can also switch this so I can click on something and it will tell me what kind of assembly it is. So this tells me right here that this piece of steel, this tube right here, that's all one assembly. So that's important because you need to know how it's getting delivered to the job site and how it's going to get erected. Because there could be, could be ways to make this more efficient where this, like these assemblies are being fabricated in the shop versus just all on site. So for example, this one has all of these weldments on, on it, but also this tube right here attached to it. Well, this is important too, because I know for you, Spencer, working through construction, like this, these are channels, right? Because you have to come up with a tube seal because the biggest challenge we had in this roof design mm -hmm. is you have a really thin SIPS truss mm -hmm. and you're having to get electrical, fire sprinklers, yes. everything that we have up here in the ceiling. Yeah, so on the east end of the building, we actually had to put holes through this, the steel beam here and through the tube here so that we can run our electrical up through here and this acts as a conduit. On, on this uh, side of the building, actually, let me flip this around. What we actually have on this side, we're utilizing this tube right here for our fire sprinkler pipe to go up in here, and that gets us into the ceiling. So again, and the reason being, we have all windows, it's 360 degree glass, the whole roof sits on glass, so your only access point is our tube steel here. That's correct. That's breaking up our steel windows in between. Mm -hmm. 
Now, how do you know from the drawing here what is powder coated? You know, is, the, is that something that we're determining in the field or is that from our designer or from uh, our, our structural drawings? Here? Uh, we just know from the contract drawings what's exposed steel and what's gonna be buried in framing. So all of, all of this still gets shop primed and then any steel that gets exposed, that's all being painted black. And so all of these, all of these beams that you see right here that go around the great room on the inside will be painted black. All the vertical tubes, this this tube that goes around the top, all of that gets painted black. But all of this stuff that's below, all these columns, they get buried in the framing, and so you don't ever see it. And one thing that's not gonna be heavily noticed, we know now during rough construction, but this fireplace acts as a big strength in the center of this room, right? Mm -hmm. For Because yeah. of the 80 foot width, 30 foot height. Yeah, so if I kind of just cut a section right here, we can just look at the fireplace. But we designed this fireplace so that the fireplace itself supports one of the trusses. So we, we have a column that sits on top of the fireplace and comes all the way up to the roof. And the wood members aren't shown right now, but the wood trusses are bearing on these columns that sit on top of the fireplace. And then who determines the structural strength as far as, you know, the turnbuckles and the rods that we have here with those structural rafters? No, that's all by the structural engineer. So these, uh, there's double uh, four by 16 or four by 18 trusses. And those are pretty strong by themselves, but these cords are gonna be tensioned so that as their load is going down on the roof and there's tension in the cords, these will just be tightened. One, for structure, but also just to make sure that these rods don't sag. Because there's such a long span that's one inch rods, they could actually just sag just based on their own weight. So we tighten those up so to make sure they're all flat. And then this is really important, you know, by getting these shop drawings, because now if you zoom out and you look at the entire project, it shows you from the, the staircase down to the basement, as well as all the structural steel on the other ends of the house. Mm -hmm. It's not even specific to the great room. Yeah, th so it's all modeled our plans have grid lines on it. So all of the steel is modeled in the correct location. So it just helps us to be able to see where all the steel is gonna be at and zoom in and look at, look at how things are assembled. Now this is one of my favorite details that we'll show here on video, but this is that, uh, that cantilevered opening here off of the master closet. Mm -hmm. And then you, you have one off in the distance, you know, walk through, you know, we have a detached structure here. So these are just parts of the RV garage. So the north end of the R RV garage has a big window system that fills this space right here. So this is just a, uh, it's like a sheer feature. It's like gonna be a moment frame right here for sheer because of the, the span of the trusses. Because this is all glass, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, and then over here, this is, for the trampoline barn, so we have a 60-foot span. So we have uh, we have an assembly here that's going to be shop fabricated with two two large steel tubes and then vertical tubes that are going to create the Clara Story windows for the barn. And so these are going to be delivered all of one assembly right here. Um, oops, let me just show that again. So you can see it's highlighted. That means it's gonna be shop fabricated as one assembly. So it'll come out on one truck. So th this column and this column here will get assembled with this little beam here. And then after those are installed, then these two just get installed on top of it. And then from there, we can just start framing. And our last one over here. Uh, this one, oh, this is, this is for the tennis remodest. Mm -hmm. We have board form concrete for this one, but it's turned off, the concrete's turned off, but you can just kind of see the, the channel structure that is kind of like a floating feature uh, or appears to be floating on the board form concrete. So all that experience came in handy from all your structural steel days. It did, yeah. And I love 3D models because you get to see. Get exactly to see. how it's fabricated, erected, and then you can make sure that everything's installed per plan and that you know we won't have any issues later. Yeah, and what I'm looking for, like, you know, like I, I look for clearances and stuff. When I look in here, I see, okay, the framer has to, you know, drill holes in LVLs and, you know, attach those there. And so I'm just looking to make sure that the bolts are in the right spot, they're the right length. You know, over here on the trampoline barn, uh, you can see where we added a bunch of bolts here, but we're just adding all of these so that it's just easier for the framer. 
sometimes the architect or the engineer just not thinking through those kind of type of details. So I'm just looking at it thinking, okay, what's well, going to make it easier for the framer? And, you know, because it's much harder to come and add all these all thread bolts on after the fact. And so just looking for those kind of things. There's windows here too. So I'm able to check elevations here and just make sure that that, you know, make sure this tube here is high enough so that the window below it will clear. And then there's also a window here. So you can, it just gives you a lot of good information so you can check your plans. And then now you get this end result. Yep. Nice awesome. work, Spence. Okay. Now, if you aren't already subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button below, like, comment. If there's any uh, topics you want us to address, including some of the amazing details in some of our projects, and we couldn't do this without our amazing team here at AFT, so stay tuned, subscribe, and you'll see some amazing content upcoming, including the progress as we get to completion of this project. Blow your mind.